Hola, today is July 9th. Good afternoon. It's not morning. Today is not daily attendance, so this is not a daily attendance um, video, okay? So today is about information about your homework. We're going to have homework, and uh, and I think that I'll be, you know, grading everything. I think midterms are up. I think everybody's pretty much set, uh, and I think that's it. So I it didn't occur to me to go through a persuasive argument because I thought you all knew, and so I've had questions. And so a persuasive argument or a persuasive essay is a topic that you choose where you want, because you are the author, you're the one that's writing it, right? You want the person that's reading it, your reader, to be able to persuade him to your whatever it is that you're writing, for your opinion of whatever it is that you're writing. So let's take, and, and this is a bad example, but it's a very clear example, right? So let's say, you know, you're pro-choice, which means that you believe in abortion, then you're going to do a persuasive argument to sway your reader, like let's say you're pro-life, right? Which means that you don't believe in, in abortion. Then you, you state all the arguments and all the benefits, if there are benefits, whatever, of, of uh, being pro-life, okay? So, uh, you know, like women's rights and all that. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just sort of saying that's a perfect example. So it's a persuasive argument. You can also do persuasive arguments on exercises, right? Or, you know, how it would, you know, would be... Um, um, to everyone's health benefit to be able to, you know, have um, a good, you know, diet. And diet doesn't mean that you're starving yourself or anything like that. And I did have a student uh, the other day and said, you know, make sure that you check out your dietitian. And absolutely, I'm not saying you don't invent your diets or anything like that. And when I reference a diet, even though I did mention Atkins, okay, um, what I, what I'm referencing in terms of diet means whatever your intake is, diet doesn't mean that you starve yourself and there's a specific thing. It means that whatever it is that you eat and whatever specific to you and everybody's different, right? So let's take a really quick example of that. It's sort of like oatmeal. Like I love oatmeal and I, you know, I read this dietitian article, how oatmeal was great and it was wonderful and it was great to lose weight. Well, for me, it doesn't make me lose weight. Okay. And so I can't eat oatmeal every single day because then I'll get chunkers and then, you know, Know, that's added weight that I can't seem to digest quickly enough or whatever and it sort of adds on the weight so even though I like oatmeal I I'm very contrary to the dietitian that said that it helps for for weight loss and whatever it does help for you know for your diet because it's oats or who the hell knows or whatever right I didn't mean to say how so um so it just means that you know you have to watch whatever it is that you read right and if it correlates to you and whatever it is that you're going through and you're the only one that knows your body right so I can tell you and I do all pescatarian and and vegetable that doesn't mean that you need to go vegetarian and 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 and, and um, you know pescatarian and vegetable okay so you have to make sure that you know your your body and just like I said that I've been eating a lot more meat I figured that I I've needed meat and that's why I've craved it but that I'm in a whole different level or whatever okay because I'm older and all sorts of stuff so make sure that you check out your dietitian no diets are good everything in moderation is great okay have your cheat sheets if you're really a disciplined in whatever it is that you eat but most definitely a diet means whatever it is that you intake and there's a balance so I didn't mean to misguide any of everybody or or say that Atkins is bad or anything. I'm just telling you what my journey was in terms of food, and I've always been pretty healthy. And it's taken me a long time to realize that, um, you know, the unhealthiness on, on the side of the Mexican uh, food. And that just, that doesn't mean anything because Mexican food is a lot of vegetarian as well. And people are barely finding out, oh, right? But that's another video and that's another section. So anyway, so um, so I went on this tangent and that's what it was. But going back to it, so persuasive arguments is that, right? Trying to persuade your reader, whoever your reader your audience is, and whoever, you know, whoever your audience is, right? It could be one or it could be several for this instance, for class, I'm the reader. So you can persuade them to be able to change, um, you know, my mind, whoever the reader is, to be able to say, well, you know what, maybe it is, or maybe, you know, the facts that they gave me is, in, it was interesting, or whatever argument they gave were interesting, or say, well, I don't think I wanna change, you know, and I'm gonna stay the same. So that's a persuasive argument. And a persuasive argument, if it meets its its objective, which is to persuade the reader to uh, agree with your argument, then you've you've um, you know done your task and you've um, you know um, um, you know su have succeeded in your goal and your objective. Okay, so this is uh, for assignments. So you're going to have assignments now. Listen closely. 
For your assignments, you do them, but then you keep them because I'm not gonna put the links up because it's gonna unbalance the grade. And we're gonna have to turn in midterms later next week, but I need to you know, grade them a million. I have like 140 students, I think, okay? So can you imagine, it takes me quite a bit to finish my essays. And as you know, because I've commented, I read every single one of them, right? And I'm very inspired and I love my students and they love me back and I love what they write. So I love um, sitting down at night is really when I do it. I can't I seem to do it in the, in, in, during the day and I sit down and usually go around two to three o'clock in the morning and then just try to finish it off during the weekend. So that's my task and that's my task in terms of upgrading everybody. It's late, right? And then making sure that those grades are correct, okay? So with the assignments, that's midterm and that's the previous one. For the assignment that is today, okay? I'm gonna put up assign, I'm, you're gonna do assignments today. There will not be a link because It'll unbalance the grade. So we're going to wait until next week when I tell you, don't freak. It'll be like Tuesday or Wednesday. All right. So don't come later and tell me, oh, I didn't know because you should do your assignment. You know, you have up until probably Monday to get it done. Okay. And you save it. You're going to screenshot them and you're going to upload them. That goes for English 145 as well. I am not going to coordinate um, and link the grades because if you guys do really bad, it takes a, a creates a problem on Cengage on my end from SU to sort of fix it and change it. So it's just easier if you screenshot for English 145. If you screenshot whatever assignment I give you, you say, you know, and then you upload it, but you're not gonna upload it because there isn't gonna be a link yet, okay? So this is your assignment. Usually I do different assignments and different videos for the different classes, but I'm just gonna do it on this one because today I'm lazy and I don't wanna do two different videos and then everybody's gonna get confused. So I'm not gonna do that, all right? So this is like a class and I'm just gonna give different assignments for the different classes, so pay attention. So for Cengage, you have chapter one and chapter two. I believe that you have like seven activities that you have to go through in terms of the chapter and then there's like a final quiz that you take. Make sure that when it averages out, you take a screenshot of that, however you can do it, and then save it. So you have to do chapter one and chapter two. It will give you the answers if you got them incorrectly. So pay attention because it gives, it allows you to take the quiz several times. Like, some, I don't know, like forever, right? So what you want to do is learn from that and then be able to uh, take it if you didn't do so well, okay? But it does lock you out after a while. Now, that is all like fifth grade uh, English, so you, and it's about prepositions and, and it's grammar. You know, nobody likes it, it's technical writing. So make sure that you go through it. And for my second language learners, make sure that you understand what it is that you got wrong because it explicitly tells you, you know, why the answer is the answer. So it's a wonderful program, okay? It's better in teachers, really. Okay, so for English 133, that's my A500 and A501. And that's English 133, we have a hard copy. For English 145, you're done. You're, this, you know, that's basically it. If you wanna go through this, that's fine. I probably won't give a conclusion at the end and you just need to listen to what it is. So this is for English 133 assignments, okay? So this is you all. You're gonna write in your books, write in your books, write on your books, write in your books, right? It's a proposition. And you're gonna, we're gonna do chapter one, all right? And I've had this book and I love it. And so it's all torn up. So listen up. These are the, these are the class, uh, these are the pages that you're gonna do. You're gonna do page three and you're gonna do personal feedback. You're gonna do that one. Page three, personal feedback. And then you're gonna do, um, and then you're gonna do page seven and it's weekly time chart, okay? You're gonna write down all your schedule because we say we don't have time and this is a perfect time to take uh, inventory of that and see when we're wasting time or where our time is. This is about everything that you do. When you sleep, when you don't, when you eat, when you don't, what you do on weekends, everything. Because in the bottom, and you need to read the instructions, that's why you need to read chapter one, you need to read it all. In the bottom, you're gonna multiply times two for the hours that you have for class. So technically, if we were going physically, you have like one hour of class per day, which is sort of what's turning out right here with my YouTube videos and stuff, and then your homework that you have. So you're gonna be multiplying that times two and that's the total amount of hours you have to spend 
to study to be an elite and successful student for each class that you have okay so if you go to like let's say we go we're supposed to go to class like five times a week right one one hour a day is more or less what it is or we can do two hours the way they have it in the online i think it's two hours you know from two to four like i don't know what the what the schedule is you guys know what it is i should have brought it in but not to confuse you so you multiply that times two and you're going to be astounded at how much astonished at how much time you need to put in to your classwork that's why i give you so much time and that's why i make my class as easy as i can as best as i can because you're supposed to be using all this time extra that you have to be studying for your other heavy duty classes that you have to do on your medical terminology that you have to learn how to do it and figure it out okay so you're gonna have that Make sure you fill it out. You're gonna screenshot it and we're gonna, um, you're gonna upload it, but not now, next week until I tell you, okay? And then we're gonna go to, <coughs> excuse me, the other day I was like coughing and I was like so rude. I don't know if I covered my mouth or not. So please excuse me. <coughs> please excuse me. Then in chapter one, we also are gonna be reading in, in page 22, efficient reading, adjusting rates, technique, and uh, to material and purpose. So there's different, there's different styles of reading and there's different purposes of reading, okay? When I do my magazines or my news, if nobody's gonna quiz me on it, I just sort of breeze to it and I don't have to put in that much attention. If I'm studying for something like my broker's exam, I'm not only trying to read through the material, but I'm trying to learn it and I'm trying to assimilate it and master it, okay? And so it depends what you're reading for. This explains tremendously. We will have hopefully teams meeting once I get you all in because you guys are a gazillion. And so uh, we'll start our teams meeting to, uh, next week okay i forgot to tell uh class 145 on that now then you come here to page 23 listen now all right because you guys some people uh oh, whatever okay so you're supposed to read this all right you're supposed to start on page 22 right here is where it starts okay and you're it's going to be a self-timed you're going to you're going to time yourself to see how how fast you read okay and what the importance is is, is that so you're gonna be reading all this and you're gonna and you're gonna time yourself. So it's gonna be a time here. It used to be, I guess, when you had stopwatches, I don't know, I think it's kind of outdated. You can do it with your with your watch, with your phone, and it'll time you. So right here is your chart. You're gonna have to convert your minutes into seconds and it gives you, you know, all the reading rate. After that, after you're done with that, after you've read this passage right here and right here, while you're timing yourself and you put down whatever time it is, right, and you figure out the um, the your score there, you have to go here in the back and you have to answer these questions. Don't look at them. These questions, you can only get, I think, one wrong. It tells you what the instructions are, okay? It doesn't give you the answers to the questions, so you're not going to know the answers to the questions. We'll review it later, okay? But you you can only get one wrong, I think. I think one wrong in order for you to be proficient in this reading. If you do not get, if you get more than one wrong, then you're not proficient in what you read because reading is not about just getting through it and reading quickly. It's about the proficiency, the accuracy, and the understanding of whatever it is that you read. If you don't understand it, then how are you supposed to know what you read, right? So you can read as fast as you can, but if you're getting through it and then later can't answer questions because you read too fast or didn't understand it, then it's of no use. So that means you need to slow down your pace, okay? So after you've done that, after you've done all that, after you've done all that, it's not gonna be here. You're gonna have to go in the internet, on the web, with your phone, or whatever it is that you use, and you're gonna look for this article that is a Forbes article, okay? So it's gonna be out of the magazine Forbes or Forbes mag article, and it's, gonna, and it's gonna be titled, Do You Read Fast Enough to Be Successful? So after you've done your reading rate, you're gonna go to Forbes Forbes article that says, you're gonna look for it, it's not here. It's not here, all right? You're gonna look for it on the net and you're gonna, and you're gonna look for it and the article is gonna be titled, titled because it's a title, because it's in writing, okay? And it's gonna be titled, Do You Read 
fast enough to be successful. There, it's gonna give you a list and it's gonna give you um, a list of where you're at. Don't be shocked, everybody's really low. We'll talk about it later. I was really low too, um, but I can't see. It turned out very interesting because I've already read this thing. I've already read this passage. So, you know, I didn't think it would be accurate if I read it because I already knew what it was, right? And I've gone through it every single semester. And so what happened is that I took another one because one, one of my students is like, Miss, well, what did you get? Right. And I had been scared and didn't want to do it. I'll be honest with you, even though I'm a heavy duty reader. Right. And I hadn't done it. So I finally read it. They have like a little section there, which you, where you could see it. Well, I couldn't see cause I'm kind of blind, you know, and so I couldn't see. So just getting through the passage of seeing it and being able to read it was difficult and hard for me. Now, let me tell you, I come from a family that has uh, eye disease and it's called keratoconus, okay? And it's a deficiency in your cornea and the cornea starts uh, deliberating. It starts like falling. It doesn't keep its its um, its shape. So what happens is that you start losing your sight. It's horrendous. All my brothers have it. Two of my, two of my four brothers and um, and some of my nephews and um, and so some other people that maybe don't want to mention. But anyway, so, um, so be grateful if you can see because they have difficulty seeing and adjusting. And when I took this exam, I couldn't see and I'm getting older and then I got like your, um, like your, um, uh, what do you call them? Your um, rosters, right? They sent me this. This is, this is part of the reason I haven't done teams. They didn't send it to me like in a format where I could like expand the, uh, the magnifying on it because of the way it was. So can you see that? I mean, I can't see these, these names. So I'm there at night trying to figure it out. So my eyesight has to adjust and it's been very hard for me. So that's why I've had a hard time really creating my team's, um, uh, uh, you know, my team groups because I can't see the, I can't see the names. And it's taking me forever to figure out the names. And so sometimes I miss you guys because maybe I put in the wrong name or whatever. So make sure that you're all in. But English 133 is not. All right. So you go and look for the Forbes magazine. Okay. And you, and then, and then we'll figure it out after you stop crying, we'll discuss it. Just kidding. And then I want you to go to page 25. Okay. And do these. These are like, it's an exercise to be able to pick out, you know, uh, what it is in the list below. The keywords are in boldface among the words, the right mark, the one most similar in meaning to keywords in this exercise, you are looking quickly for meaning. So it's a quick, like boom, 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 because in your book, it tells you, um, there's, I forget what it's called, but every time like you blink and every time like you, you delay, then th that creates delays for you. Okay. So it's about actually for reading. It's about memorizing the words it's about in instinct instinctively and instantly uh, recognizing the word and so that will speed up your rate now there is an, an SU portal there is like a speeding rate there's like two videos I think on week one and week two so check make sure you you check those out because they give you like little tidbits on speed reading um, you know I've never been able to do speed reading I always like missed everybody and I of course I didn't take a, a course I just sort of you know researched it when I was smaller or whatever when I was younger not smaller and so um so I was never able to speed read so I don't speed read but I don't think that I read as bad as I as the as as the little test was okay so make sure that you do 25 and do the exercise you have to circle that and then you're going to go into make sure that you read this you say pacer you have to read chapter one okay so make sure that you read this and this is what I was talking about I was talking about page 26 it's called fixations it's very interesting what the eye does make sure you read that because this is a really 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 important uh, chapter it tells you how reading is it tells you where you're at it tells you all sorts of stuff okay and then I want you to um, give me a minute I think that's it there's another one that I want you but I think I'll give you guys a break let me see just give me a minute I got my braces again so my little my little teethies are hurting because of the COVID and all that. So, um, make sure you read this as well. Use a pacer. I usually use a pacer, especially since I'm kind of blind. It helps me not lose my, my place because if you lose your place, then you have to reread everything. And that's such a waste of time. Okay. So don't lose your place. Okay. So I think that concludes today. I will see you tomorrow. As you all know, I got a haircut, um, and I got my braces. So I'm all, I'm all back to normal, I guess. 
to some degree as best as we can. Much love and light. Remember that these links will not be up. Don't don't email me and tell me where the link is, and don't email me and tell me that the link is wrong. I mean, not wrong. That it's the the dates are off and that's not where it's supposed to be. Not wrong. Tell me when the link is wrong. You guys told me and I fixed it, so I appreciate that. So I will see you tomorrow. Um, love and light. You know, you probably have till Monday to get it done. It's really simple and easy. Don't leave my work till the end because then it's a lot. Um, and just get it done, right? Look, as if, you know, no dejas para mañana lo que se puede hacer hoy. Don't leave for tomorrow what you can do today. And if you leave that, if you have that model, model, model with a TTO, right, for life, it can change your life. Many blessings, love and light. Ciao.